Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of the Microgreen Show. With today's episode, we are going to be visiting an urban farmer on the East Coast. He will be giving us a tour and he will be explaining on how his farm increased by 50%. Alright, so let's get on with that episode. My name is Don DeLillo, uh, Donnie Greens if you will. And I started my urban farm about three and a half, four years ago from my parents' basement. My goal was, well, I always wanted to work for myself and uh, I discovered my passion for agriculture my sophomore year in college. So it was just a matter of what am I gonna grow? You know, microgreens got hot pretty quick. I saw the ad online, hey, you can start a business growing microgreens. So I was like, boom, that's it. Let's dive right in. Um, dove right in in my parents' basement outgrew that in a few months, moved into a new farm. I was there for about another year. I was at 10 racks in that second farm, three in my parents' basement. And now I'm in this big, beautiful commercial farm space. Um, I have 12 racks fully running and enough room to at least double my production. So that's where I'm at right now, just looking to improve the health and sustainability of my local community. Uh, Rack, essentially a microgreens rack is a shelving unit that you strap on some grow lights and the trays sit on each shelf. And this is the way a lot of microgreens farmers grow microgreens. So my story goes as follows. When I first started this business, coincidentally at the same time, I started learning about health and nutrition and learning about growing your own sprouts at home and living foods. In the course that I purchased, it was recommending that I sell to restaurants and chefs. But at the same time, I was learning about the health benefits of these foods. So I was like, well, where's the value here? Are these foods really all that value as a little valuable as a little garnish on a plate? I don't think so. I think that their value is really in the nutritional benefits of these foods. And I started a home delivery subscription model where I grow people's orders. It's all grown to order. Whatever they want me to grow for them each week, I grow it, I pack it up, put it, in it, put it in the fridge, and then the next morning, it gets delivered all around Long Island, which is where my farm is, right in Huntington, this pandemic. And a lot of microgreens farmers, I mean, everybody's hurting, but specific to microgreens farmers, a lot of them are hurting because they focus primarily on restaurants. And yeah, there's huge margins and a lot of money to be made with restaurants, but if you didn't diversify your customer base and you were focused specifically like just on restaurants, when all the restaurants closed down because of the pandemic, they then lost a huge chunk of their business. And when that happens, they still have to pay rent. They still have to pay electricity and heat their building and, and that whole thing. So they still have these bills to pay, but now they're not getting the cash flow that they were before. So I'm very grateful that, it, that I decided to go Um, the direct-to-consumer home delivery route because it actually allowed me to be very resilient in my business model. I don't rely on restaurants. I don't rely on on anybody, really. Um, It's all up to me. I have a good relationship with my customers, and they understand the value of these foods. Coincidentally, the coronavirus has my business up 50% is what the numbers are looking like are what the numbers are looking like. So I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be, you know, still growing and selling and for the purpose of having people be healthy rather than just a garnish on a plate. So that's where I'm at. So you can see these are microgreens racks. Everything grows vertically. Got wheatgrass, broccoli, pea, sunflower, radish, barley grass, and microgreen mix. I'm always as transparent as possible, so. Yeah. Back here, I got my soil delivery yesterday. So this is a- I love that mix. Yeah, it's a good one. It's technically not soil because it doesn't have sand, silt, or clay. It's a potting mix. So (laughs) peat moss, mainly peat moss, yeah. Mainly peat moss, perlite, and then mycorrhizae, which is a fungus for roots. Um, For microgreens, I'm not sure it really does much because they're so young. But hey, it's in there and it's certified. Well, I mean, just hints, hints of it do matter on flavor, by the way. A lot of the research I've done, uh, I've done a lot of research with Michelin star restaurants and they can tell the difference when, when it wasn't present and it was present. Interesting. That's And good. the flavors. So it's good that it's present for the plant. So good job on that. All right. Well, thank you for that information. I love that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, check this out. You'll appreciate this. So this is my automatic seed soaking system. Previously, I had to come into my farm every single night at 8 p.m. to you know, soak my seeds for the next day. 
but now I bought this little controller that's in here. I saw it at Apple when I went in to get my laptop fixed and I, my jaw literally dropped and I freaked out in Apple because- Wait, 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 Apple had that? Yeah, in Apple, they had this device. It's really for gardens, you know? You can put your garden on automation, but instead I rigged it up like this for my microgreens operation, put some shower heads on here, and now this goes off at you know 3 a.m. so that way when I get into the farm in the morning it's a perfect amount of soap time. <laughs> nice, good job. The seeds are all set up ready to go and then that'll they'll start filling up in the middle of the night while I'm still sleeping. Nice. So, Did you have a germination room at all? Well yeah that was actually the germination room. Let me okay. check that. Yeah, yeah 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 let's get back Let's to that. keep my soil right because you want your soil as close to where the process starts. Exactly. Good job. Good job explaining that too. So that's where I make all it's my. All about, it's, it's all about flow, ch flow ch having flow charts, correct? Flow charts. Yeah, exactly. So when you're setting up your grow room, you really want to think deeply about how everything flows through your farm. Where does your soil come in? Where do you want to store your soil? How do the trays flow through the farm? Where are you doing your packaging? When the product is going out the door, you should probably have your fridge where you're storing them close to there to try and focus on efficiency as much as possible. So that's my table for tray making. I got my soil in the bins over there that I break up from the bales. This is my seed cabinet nice. <laughs> recycled from my aunt and uncle. <laughs> and you can see this is how I germinate. I use the weights on top. I think nice. they're cool, but you know. And do you do all, all, var all varieties get treated the same way? The only difference is obviously germination time as well as if the seeds get soaked or not. So I'm soaking pea, sunflower, barley, and wheat, and then radish, uh, broccoli, and the micromix is not getting soaked. But that's the only difference. You can see these radish babies are coming up. Nice. So this is the germination room. And then from here, <clears throat> another huge efficiency tip. This is what I call the super rack. So <laughs> it's a rack on wheels and all the shelves are spaced much closer together and there's no lights. So this enables you to move a ton of trays through the farm all at once. So when I'm taking trays out of germination to put under lights, I load them on here and then unload. When I'm taking the trays out of the lights to get ready for harvesting, I load them onto here. And then this sits right next to the harvesting table. So you can just pull them, harvest, put it right back on the rack and it's nice and efficient. And then, yeah, I mean, that's about it. I got some plant starters over here that I'm trying to get in the ground as soon as possible. I want to experiment with some edible flowers. So I got nasturtiums. Nice. I have borage. Nice. And then I have some arugula and mustard just for- And that's the same potting mix, correct? Same potting mix, yep. Nice, perfect. Well, works. Actually, obviously they're, they're gonna need some nutrients because they're older veg. So they'll go into some. Is there, no, is there a reason why you chose the potting mix over hydroponics? Or are you just, just is this is just the first route that you went in? Or is this the way you were taught? I guess it's kind of the first route I went. I experimented with, with uh, like some of those grow mats and trying to do it without the soil. And the plants like just didn't like it as much as the soil. So I figured, all right, the plants are telling me they like the soil better. I'll stick with soil. And uh it's definitely a lot messier and harder to dispose of the spent trays. But I think overall, I'm really happy with the soil and I'm gonna stick that way, at least for now. Well, hey, thank you. Thank you for uh, showing us your farm and, and talking to us. Uh, I'm gonna head out. I have to head out to another meeting, but thank you. And um, do you wanna go ahead and tell everybody where to find you and tell a little bit about yourself real fast? Yeah, sure. Yeah. And first of all, thanks for having me. This has been great. It's been great meeting you. I know this all happened pretty quick, so it's really cool. Um, but yeah, you can find me on YouTube. I'm doing educating on there. So you can search for Donnie Greens. Uh, my Instagram channel will hopefully start posting content in the next month or two. It's just very busy over here. Um, but yeah, that's me, Donnie Greens. You should be able to find me. Hey, thank you for your time, Donnie. Yeah, I'll thank you. About I want to have you on again. Let's do this regularly. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. Let's do it. All right, bye. Later. Thank you, everybody, for joining me once again for another episode of the Microgreen Show. And thank you, Donnie, for explaining and giving us a tour of your farm. This shows you that focusing on a certain market is very crucial to your business plan. Like always, 
Happy Friday and be safe.